Hey guys, I wanted to come on here today to talk about a phenomenon that happens kind of frequently um, on people on the Twin Flame journey. Um, it happens, I have several, many students um, I've had and have many students who are in these, these situations. And that is when you co-parent with the Twin Flame, in other words, you have kids with your Twin Flame and or you work with your Twin Flame. Um, and you know, if you are trying to advance along this journey, at first you, it's recommended that you cut all contact with your twin flame and with other people you associate with your twin flame and things of that nature um, as much as possible. Because remember, what we're doing is we are balancing out the addictive fear-based push energy. And you know that push energy again is addictive. And so we need to first break that addiction, right? That addictive patterning and that addictive feeling. And so um, the best way to do that, as with any addiction, of course, is to cut it out <laughs> and remove yourself from like certain situations and habits and people and, you know, things that, you know, kind of trigger you to then, you know, focus on that, that addictive behavior, right? Um, so that's the same thing with what we want to do here when we first, you know, begin to work with our energy and advance along our journey. Um, if you want to be with your twin flame in a physical relationship, I know it sounds counterintuitive, but the way to, to go about that is to cut all contact with your twin flame. This is not, um, uh, you know, a means, a way, you know, you're not trying to do it to play games with them or anything like that. In fact, it has nothing to do with the twin flame itself. It has to do with you, with you being able to break that addictive, energetic pull that you feel to the physical form of your twin flame, right? That addictive fear-based energy. Um, in order to do that, we need to usually remove <laughs> triggers and the twin flame and other people's situations and things that, you know, kind of our fear-based energy associates with the physical form of the twin flame. That's to break that addiction. And that's what needs to be done first, usually. However, there are people in situations that, you know, they can't do that. They just can't, um, you know, totally block or cut off um, contact with the twin flame for a while uh, to break that addiction because of extenuating circumstances. And like I tell my students, there are two extenuating circumstances where, um, you know, it's, you know, you can't, obviously, you're not expected to have to break off all contact with your twin flame. And that is when one, you co-parent with your twin flame, you share kids with your twin flame, you have like a custody agreement going on or whatever. That's one. Two is when you work with your twin flame. And um, even so, though, with those two things where it might be out of your control that you have to see your twin flame or you, or you have to do it for kids' sake or your boss's sake or your company's sake or your business's sake or whatever, um, you know, other than those two scenarios, you should always, always, always break and cut all contact with your twin flame before you even attempt to do any kind of energetic balancing or aligning or anything like that. Um, you know, that's, that's like the first necessary step, really. Um, for the reasons I previously mentioned. However, if you are in one of the two situations where you share kids with your twin flame or you work with your twin flame, and therefore it's out of your control whether or not you have to communicate with your twin flame or whatever, uh, yes, that makes it way more challenging to break that addictive energy. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going <laughs> to pretend that it doesn't. Ideally, you would be able to not be in those situations, but if you are, that's, um, you know, you can also look at it that, you know, it can help you balance more further down the road. Um, but if you are in those situations, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you are keeping it only business as usual, right? Nothing personal. Uh, you know, so for example, say you co-parent with your twin flame and, you know, you have custody or your kids stay with you, you know, two nights and then the next night they go to, you know, your twin flame's house or whatever. When you meet up to, you know, to exchange the kids or however you do it, um, you know, you just keep it like here they are, you know, here's their stuff or whatever. And, you know, you know, I'll, I'll be back to pick them up, you know, on this day, this time, or you can drop them off on this day, this time, whatever, right? Keep it, you know, facts, logistically, um, anything you need to do legally, and that's it. Keep it to that. No small talk, no chit chat, no, you know, wanting to like ask how they're, you know, anything about their personal lives or talk about your personal life or anything like that. You want to keep it as clean as, you know, just legal as business as possible, as least personal as possible, right? And that's the same thing if you work with your twin flame. 
Now, working with your twin flame, I mean, this can obviously vary many different ways, right? Like, I mean, you could say you work with your twin flame and you work in a company of like 3,000 people, right? And like, you know, so you don't have to associate with your twin flame. Like, they could work in like one area of the build of the complex. You could work in another, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to see them and communicate with them or, or speak with them at all on a daily basis, right? Um, and, you know, you have to be honest with yourself here. If that's how you work with your twin flame, then you can definitely cut off contact, you know, if you don't have to, you know, deal with them in the work environment at all or even see them, right? Um, now, there's people, you know, there's all variations of that. Then there's people who, you know, they don't have to talk to their twin flame, but they see them. They'll see them because they both, like, you know, work in the same immediate vicinity or, you know, their cubicles are, like, you know, next to each other or because, you know, um, you know, they both have to take lunch at the same time in the, you know, employee cafeteria or whatever, right? Stuff like that. Um, you know, and in those instances as well, you don't really have to start conversation. You don't have to talk to them. You don't even have to look at them. You know, you can still kind of keep your distance. Now, when you work with your twin flame and, I mean, you're working on a project together or, you know, you own a business together or you have to, you know, really discuss things with your twin flame or twin flames your boss you know or something like that um you know in those situations obviously again where you have to and you absolutely must communicate and keep contact going with the twin flame then you want to keep it again only business as usual i don't care if your twin flame tries to bring in personal stuff tries to do all this other stuff you need to take charge you are the one doing this work you are here learning about this you are the one who when your energy repels each other feels like crap, right? <laughs> I mean, no, everyone feels like crap, but you know, you're the one that, you know, is here, you know, feeling not very great, right? Looking and searching for answers. And so this is really what needs to be done. We need to keep it as businessy as usual. Keep the personal stuff out of it. No idle chit chat. No, how are you? No, this and that. No, if they say you look great, you know, oh yeah, you know, you smile, like, hey, they think I look great. No, it's just like business as usual. And that's it. You know, this is where loving yourself comes in. This is where people ask me all the time about boundaries. I, I, I'm big on boundaries because it is self-love. But, I mean, this really is where in the very first beginning of your journey, if you are in one of these situations where you must, um, you know, communicate with your twin flame. And remember, there's only really two situations where that's really, you really must. And that would be if you co-parent with the twin flame or if you work with the twin flame. Um, and even when you work with Twin Flame, you don't always must, like I said before, right? There's different scenarios in that as well. But that's where you be honest with yourself. And if you really, really must, you have to. You have to because of your job or because of the kids. You have to communicate or see or interact with your Twin Flame physically. Then, you know what, you, you have to really set the boundaries. You have to set the boundaries, and that's loving yourself. Because why those boundaries that you set where you're not going to take it beyond anything business, no matter what the twin flame is doing or saying to you, right? Even if they're coming on to you, if they're flirting with you, if they're like, you know, stripping down, ready to get down with you. No, for your own self-preservation, for your own advancement along your journey, for you to ensure for yourself that you never, ever, ever on the floor feeling like crap ever again regardless of what your twin flame is doing, saying, thinking, feeling, where you take that power back for yourself, you must keep it business as usual and you must set those boundaries for yourself. And you must honor those boundaries. So if, you know, your twin flame, you know, somehow is coming on to you or whatever, or not, or trying to take it beyond, you know, a business as usual thing and try to bring in, you know, start arguing with you or, or pushing your buttons or triggering you or, or even coming on to you or anything like that. It's up to you to honor your boundaries. You set the boundaries for yourself. You don't even have to tell your twin flame about them. That's not the twin flame's business. This is your boundaries you're setting for yourself. Ultimately, ultimately it's going to help them out too because as you balance, of course, you're balancing them out as well. But that's not the point. The point is right now where you are in this moment, you need to set the boundaries for yourself that, hey, I'm only keeping this business as usual. If my twin flame crosses what I think that line should be, and again, you want to be totally honest with yourself here, what you think that line would be, if it's no longer business, if they're starting to, you know, nitpick or, or trigger you or get you pissed off or do whatever, right? Then you need to set the boundaries. Hey, this is crossing the line. This is crossing the line of business that I want to, I want to set for this and establish this boundary for myself. And, you know, at that point you just remove yourself. You don't have to say anything to inflame. You don't have to even, you don't owe them anything. This is honoring your own boundaries that you're establishing for yourself. This guys is self love. This is self love what you need to do at this point of your journey at this at this stage where you know if you need to break that addictive that addictive push energy to break that addiction you need to have as little contact as possible with your twin flame at first 
And if you must have contact, like I said, through co-parenting or working, you must set boundaries to make it that so that it is only just da, 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 business as usual. No small talk, no flirting, no um, arguing, no anything like that. Nothing, nothing personal. Just here are the kids. I'll pick them up this time. You know, here's the report you wanted. There it is, right? That's it. In and out leave, it's, it's, it's just simple. Business as usual. As soon as your twin flame crosses that line or you feel it could cross that line, you just remove yourself physically from the situation at that point. Right. And that means you, you, you know, go outside, we'll take a walk, do whatever, leave, whatever you got to do. Right. But, you know, you want to honor that boundary for yourself. This is very important. And um, yes, it may sound more challenging and daunting in the beginning if you're in one of these situations. However, once you establish that boundary and you keep that going and you really can hold that boundary for yourself, you'll realize that all these interactions that you must have with your twin flame due to the co-parenting or the working, eventually, I mean, you could use those to your advantage because you could use every single one of those to help you balance your energy even more. Um, but that's further on down the line. But at first, you know, you do want to, if, you know, most people in the world can break contact with their twin flame because most people I've noticed, at least some people, I mean, I don't know. It just seems the vast majority of people that I've ever worked with, they are not co-parenting with their twin flame and they are not working with their twin flame. Now the people that are, this is for you. Okay. This is, this video is for, um, so yeah, it is more challenging, uh, not to be able to totally break contact with your twin flame at first, but again, later on down the line, it can be used to your advantage. So, you know, take heart with that. But definitely, this is where establishing boundaries comes in. This is where you truly love yourself. And if you would like any help doing this, I just want to remind you, I do have a limited number of spaces available in my Magnetize Your Twin Flame Coaching Program. It's going to be the last program that I'm opening up, the last start date of 2019. It's on November 22nd. It's starting, and we are enrolling people now. There's a limited number of spaces. They, are, they do fill up very quickly, and especially this time because I'm offering a $2,000 discount with it off the regular price of the program as well as free admission to my live event on December 14th. And so that's going to be in Jacksonville Beach, Florida, where I will tell you your soul's signature. We will do tons of awesome aligning work and shifting closer into alignment with your soul, with your sacred heart, with abundance, with everything that is divinely yours, as well as sound healing on the beach under the moon. It's going to be awesome and a lot of other fun stuff too that isn't necessarily spiritual or twin flame-ish, but just fun. And so we're going to be doing that at the live event. And you can get free admission at live event if you enroll in my coaching program in one of these limited spaces for the start date of November 22nd with the $2,000 discount. I'm doing this all just so that, you know, you guys, it's the last one of 2019 that you start off the next year and the next decade in 2020 um, on the best note possible and feeling amazing and, you know, interacting with your twin flame again in the whole energetic space of love if that's what you choose and that's what you want, or if not just feeling amazing and being able to just like, you know, Take what is divinely yours and given to you from the universe. You'll be open to receive it. And that's really what this shifting of energy is about also, being open to receive everything, all love. And, um, of course, that's from your twin flame as well. But anyway, I will put the link to schedule um, a call. It's a free call where you can schedule to see if you are a good fit for a program. You can decide that. And if you are and you would like to enroll, perfect. If you, if you feel like you aren't and you don't want to enroll, no worries, no pressure. It's not a big deal. Schedule the call. This call is good anyway. The call is very helpful. It will give you complete clarity about your own unique situation and where you are in this moment with your twin flame. It will also, um, you know, provide you with your own three-step map to help guide you along your journey and what you need to do. And a little mini coaching session in there as well, all for free. So definitely schedule the call um, if you were ever on the fence about, you know, getting help, like with someone who knows what they're doing for your twin flame journey. If you were ever, um, if you watch my videos a lot, if you resonate with what I'm saying, it is the truth. There's only one truth. This is it. Um, then you know what? Definitely don't put it off. This is the time to do it. This is the time to put yourself first and make yourself a priority. Love yourself and really advance along your journey and get the support and the guidance that you need. And we are here for you. So definitely um, click the link. I will schedule that for your free clarity consultation. Have a great night. And I will see you tomorrow. Lots of love.